my channel. My name is Sydney, and today I'm doing my first ever q and I'm so excited. So if you are new here, hello. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, and go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I do all things faith-based and lifestyle videos here. So all of these questions were actually asked through my Instagram, so if you're not following me, make sure to follow me at Sidkel, and that's where we do all kinds of fun. I'm literally an Instagram addict, and I post on there 24-7, so make sure to follow me. But yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into these questions because they are so, so good. Okay, so the first question is marriage. What do you think the key to marriage is for you that makes you and Tony so strong? Which, thank you so much, that's so sweet, that makes me really happy. Tomorrow is actually our two year anniversary and I'm just so excited. We're gonna have our quarantine little anniversary and it's just gonna be so much fun. But yeah, I feel like the number one thing that kept us so strong, so to say, is that we've always put Christ first. I know that could be annoying if you're not a Christ follower or whatever, but we've always put Christ first and Jesus has always been the center of our marriage. And I know for a fact, if he was not the center of our marriage, there's no way that we would be as strong as we are today. Um, it's just because when we have certain uh, trials or certain things that come against us, we always just, you know, go to the common ground of walking in love and, you know, basically following what the word says. So that's how I feel why our marriage is so strong. And honestly, we are best friends. Like he really is my best friend. We have so many things in common and we have the same similar interests. We both love shopping. We both love YouTube. We both love doing, um, you know, things for the house and stuff like that. So we just have so many things in common. And I think that's why our marriage is so, uh, so strong because we are best friends and we literally love doing everything together. So with those two things, that is my answer on, I guess, why our marriage is so strong, which thank you so much for that. That's a huge Huge compliment that you can say that so thank you okay I think covering the transition from a very secular lifestyle into a new Christianity give me the good and the bad okay so I think this is a great question because when you're kind of transitioning so to say from living you know your secular lifestyle into a life of faith there is a big transition and I remember once I heard this girl say um, that she gave up a lot she sacrificed a lot to follow Jesus and that is true so say, you know that's true you do give up a lot of different things or whatever but I was also thinking about that and even though you give up a lot you gain so much more like I wouldn't say it in a sad way you know like oh I gave up so much because the things that I've given up I feel like the things that people have given up you literally get so much more when you follow Christ. Like for instance, say you're giving up these friendships or you're giving up some toxic family members and not you know, <laughs> being with them all the time, or you're giving up that job, or you're giving up just something that's being toxic and just like really run ruining your life. Anything that doesn't stem from faith is usually things that are really coming against you and probably stressing you out or just like making your life miserable in general. So giving those things up, giving alcohol up or giving whatever it is that you feel convicted of giving up, there's always more to be gained. So like for me, like when I gave up, you know, certain toxic friends, like most of them have come back where we're still close and now we're just following Jesus together. Um, or family members that, you know, would say bad things about me or make me not feel good enough or, you know, get me into bad situations. Like now that they're, you know, not very close in my life, um, I've had more peace and more rest and things like that. So it's like you feel like, oh, you're giving up so much, but there's so much more to gain. There's always more to gain for Christ. Like I would do it 120 times again because there's nothing that beats the price of just being free and having peace and just feeling, you know, just love in your heart and just, I don't know, my life is so much better after giving my life to Christ, 100%. Okay, does God always speak to us? I feel like he hasn't spoke to me in so long. I like that question a lot because sometimes it's hard when you're listening to messages or different people um, talking about Jesus and him speaking to you and things like that. And I want to say too, I've never heard God's voice like audibly, like super loud where I'm like, whoa, who was that? Like, you know, I've never had that moment. But there are some people who I believe who have had that uh, moment, but God actually does not speak to me in that way. Um, the way that God kind of speaks to me is, I don't want to say the word vision because that's weird, but I feel like I'll be, you know, my imagination will just be like super deep in thought and just like very specific and I can literally see certain like, you know, ministries or ideas or business things just be birthed out of these you know, ideas, which, you know, I guess technically that'd be like a vision, but like in my imagination, if that makes sense, um, that's how God kind of speaks to me and things like sisterhood has been born or my business has been born or just different things. Like God's made it very, very clear that like 
this is what this looks like. And I believe that's how it speaks to me. But if that's not how it speaks to you, there's so many different ways. Like it could just be aligning things up in scripture or hearing certain messages, the same theme over and over and over again. Um, there's just so many different ways they can speak to us. My One of my best friends, um, he will give her like dreams and things like that. That's never really happened to me. So don't be discouraged if God's speaking to you in a different way because he speaks in all different ways. So if you're not hearing him um, in the way I do or someone else does, like I would really encourage you to get alone in your prayer time and really talk to him about that because I promise you he's always speaking to us. It's just, are we listening in the right way? How did you know you weren't supposed to go to college? I want to drop out, but I'm scared. Okay, that's a good one because I am a college dropout and I will say I'm all for college. So if you do not have the determination or the skill set or the mindset to go after a career or a different or a job that you're looking for, um, something that's really on your heart, if you do not have that drive as is, you need to go to college. Okay. And also if you need to be, if you want to be like a doctor or something like that, clearly you need to go to college, but say it's like something like a graphic designer or a marketer or a photographer or I don't know, something, a business degree, whatever. Um, I don't believe you have to go to college because obviously like me and my husband are running a six figure photography business and we've never, Tony's like a high school dropout. So like we're both college dropouts and we're doing pretty well. So I would say you have to have that drive. You have to, you know, put in the hours to better yourself and you know, look at the resources around you and do whatever you can. I took online classes um, just so if I needed, if I was stuck on something. So um, you have to have that thing in you to, you know, that hunger to go after your dream. But if you don't and you literally need someone like holding your hand and walking you through, you probably need to go to school. Um, so I feel like it's a very slim, you know, pick of who goes to school and who doesn't go to school because I'm for school, but you have to have that drive. Okay, since you're not on birth control, are you scared of getting pregnant too early? That's a good one because if you are new here um, on my Instagram, I talked about how I'm not on birth control. I've never been on birth control. Tony and I have been married for two years. Before then, I even had sex. Never had birth control, blah, blah. And um, also, long story short, we don't always use protection. I use a natural birth tracking system, which that's a whole other video. If you want that, let me know in the comments below. Don't know how I feel about making it since I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but I can tell you my experience if you want. But anyways, I'm not on birth control and never will be, never have been. And uh, I use the natural tracking to make sure I'm not fertile when we are sexually active. And I will say it's been perfect this entire time. I've never had like a real pregnancy scare where I'm like, oh my God, am I pregnant? Like, cause I know my body so well because of this natural um, tracking. So I'm not really afraid of getting pregnant too early. If I were to get pregnant early, I, I believe like no child is a mistake. So if I got pregnant, I believe like, you know, God probably wanted me to get pregnant because I feel like every person, you know, every baby, like God has a plan for that baby. So I'm perfectly fine. Um, little, little secret is we want to start trying in April of 2020, wait, 2021. <laughs> so if we got any, if I got pregnant from now into then, like I'd be fine, like I would not mind. But yeah, so I'm not trying to get pregnant right now. If I did, no big deal. But yeah, I'm not really afraid if we were to get pregnant. I'd be excited, so yeah, not, not afraid. <laughs> All right, why did you step down from leadership? Okay, so if you did not know, Tony and I served hardcore at our church and we love our church. We ran the young adult ministry and we were able to grow it and you know see a lot of fruit from it and we loved it so much. But recently we have stepped down from ministry, or not ministry, from leadership at our church and the only reason, literally whatsoever, is that God has put so many things on my heart that I want to pursue and I just know I can't do it um, at my church just because of the way like things are. Like You have to be like 100% all in, which I totally understand and respect. And I just know I can't give 100% when I have these different desires that God's kind of put on my heart to pursue. So I want to make sure also like when I'm leading people, I am 100% like in. Like I don't do anything half butt. So I want to make sure that whatever I'm pouring my heart into, I'm 100% there. And I believe Tony and I, we were there over maybe a year and a half um, in that ministry. And it was amazing, but I know it's like our season is up and we're moving into the next thing. And I know um, the ministry is already fruitful as is and it's gonna be amazing. And I can't wait to see what happens with it. And we're still gonna be attending and hanging out. Like nothing, literally nothing happened with our church. We just know it's time to move into um, things that God's placed on our heart, like um, sisterhood and just different things like that. 
So nothing happened at all. And that goes into the next question. Someone asked, are we switching churches? We're not switching churches. We love our church. We'll never leave our church. Like it'll always be our home church, I'll say. Um, but I do have some other churches that my friends are family, friends, churches. Wait, I'm saying this weird. I do have some, why am I saying this weird? Maybe because these frogs are throwing me off. They're so loud. We have a pond out there and they're just like crazy all the time. Okay. I have some friends. I have a family friend who has a church and I want to go and listen. That's what I'm trying to say. That was so complicated. I hope I said that right. So um, if you ever see us on Instagram and we're at a different church or something, just visiting, um, don't get freaked out or you have not switched churches. I'm just hanging out and visiting um, some family churches. So Yep, that's it, church drama, but no, nothing's changed. Still living our lives. Okay, these frogs are so loud. Okay, this is a funny one. Honest opinion of getting started with it works. I wanna sell, but scared I won't start. Wait, oh, I wanna start, but I'm scared I won't sell. Okay, that's a good one because um, if you didn't know, I did sell for it works for a little bit. I didn't get really high up. I didn't like work too hard. I was just like, I think a ruby or something. I can't remember. But um, I will say, I loved It Works. Like, I love the products. I still use the products. I think it's great. Great company to work for. They're, like, faith-based and, like, literally a beautiful company. I love it. Um, but I will say, to be successful, you have to work very, very hard. And, um, I mean, you have to work hard at anything you do. A lot of people think, like, sometimes um, these people will post it on social media. And they're like, oh, yeah, join us. We'll make this much money. Yeah. You know, and, like, it seems like it's going to be easy. It's not easy. But nothing in life is easy. So, um... <laughs> I will say, make sure you're under someone that knows what they're doing. Um, the person that I was under definitely knew what she was doing, so she helped get me to the ranking that I was at pretty quickly. And I know if I wanted to um, push harder, I would probably rank up higher if I wanted to put that much into it. So make sure the person that you are under, like your team, uh, there's someone that's successfully doing it for a couple of years. Because if you're under someone that doesn't really know what they're doing, I think that's kind of like scary because you're gonna get lost along the way, you're not gonna know what you're doing, and that's where you could be wasting money. But I do believe if you're under a good team and and you really want to put a lot of work into it you will be really successful because it's a great company great products they're easy to sell so yeah that's, that's my input okay i'll do two more my boyfriend isn't equally yoked as me and wants to get married is that okay um wow <laughs> okay sorry but so if you are not on the same page in your religion your faith on your relationship with Jesus, because I'm a Christian, that's where I'm going with this. Um, it's not really gonna work out. I will say, like, you can try, but there's gonna be certain things that you will get into road bumps and you will not see eye to eye, you will not understand each other, you will not be able to come to a conclusion, or better yet, you think you do, but there's still stuff under the rug because you don't have Christ as the center. I'm telling you, Jesus is the only one that like can get you to a place of full forgiveness, full trust. And I'm telling you, like, I mean, don't even, if you're like, oh, trying to fight it, like look at your own relationships. Are they working out? Some might be, some might not be. I don't know. I'm not trying to come at you, but you asked for my opinion and that's it. Um, I know for a fact that Tony and I would not work out if it wasn't for Christ. So I think it's important to be equally yoked. And also by equally yoked, it doesn't mean both being like a Christian or both being whatever. Um, it also means spiritual levels. So obviously you want the man leading you. So Tony, I would say he's like more spiritually mature, but we're still like equally yoked. Like we're on the same page. We both believe the same way. We both, you know, can have the same conversations, but Tony is always like pushing himself to know more and stuff because he's wanting to lead me, lead our family, future family and things like that. So I think it's very, very important to be equally yoked and I really don't see a, a marriage thriving without it. Okay, I'm gonna do my final question. And this one is, tell us about your assistant work and what you do for that. I'm interested in hearing more. So I think that's cool. Um, if you didn't know, I am an assistant part-time for Emily Frisella and it's really, really fun. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. So she has um, cookbooks and a planner line and just literally the queen of just everything. Like she's just so smart and such an amazing businesswoman and it's really fun. So what I do for her, but mainly it's like, for instance, she has the Women in Business Workshop, and right now we're really tying up loose ends, and I got to help um, put that together and different things, and there's just, I don't know, it just depends like what project she's working on, because there's so many different projects she's working on, like 
you know, when she has her planners, so like I got to help out with a little bit of that and like sending off orders and things. And then like I did the photos for her cookbook, which was really fun. And um, so like she made all the recipes and then I would shoot them that day and I got to kind of see like her make this cookbook and it's so good. Literally her recipes are so good and I got to help out with that. And I just get to be a part of really cool things because she's literally a genius and I get to help assist with those things. So um, I know it's not a big answer, but I just don't want to like say too much because I don't know. I also built her website, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, um, that's about it. <laughs> I also, oh yeah, I do her photos too, so that's cool. Um, that's about it, okay. All right, guys, that is all for my question and answer. That was fun. Okay, so if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up because I don't know if I liked making this video. Um, if you want more of them, please let me know because I've never made a question and answer video. So if you want me to make more, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you all in my next one. See you later, bye. One, two, three.